campus of the University of Iowa, CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball, Michigan against Iowa. It's a Big Ten game, both of these teams chasing the Purdue Boilermakers. Michigan currently one game back, and Iowa three off the pace with four to go. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bern Lundquist, and welcome to Iowa City on behalf of all of us at CBS. This is a rematch 24 days ago. These two teams met in Ann Arbor. Michigan thundered past the Hawkeyes by 17. They had a 35-point lead at the half, shot 59% for the game. I'm working today with Tommy Heinz, and Tommy, obviously the Hawkeyes haven't forgotten, but how do they make amends? What's important today? Well, like always, they can on defense to produce wins. They provide the ultimate basketball IQ test with their various pressure defenses. What they do is count on you to make poor decisions and then come up with steals to create easy baskets. Michigan comes in with a 22-4 and four season record and two men averaging better than 20 points per game, Gary Grant and Glenn Rice. Well, both these guys are outstanding all-around basketball players, particularly on the fast break. They make good decisions when they're passing and both of them can score from inside and outside. They've got the type of talent to beat a press. This one could set a stratospheric record for scoring and a heck of an enthusiastic crowd on hand. Back with the lineups after this. CB Capacity at Carver Hawkeye Arena listed at 15,500. There are at least that many here. And the Michigan Wolverines come in led by head coach Bill Frieder now in his eighth year. 22 and four for the season, ranked seventh in the country, 11 and two in Big Ten basketball. And they will start in the front court. Glenn Rice averaging 24 points per game in Big Ten, along with Terry Mills, a sophomore. And Mark Hughes gets his fifth consecutive start today. And in the backcourt, the All-American candidate, Gary Grant, along with Romeo Robinson, another sophomore. Tom Davis is in his second year as head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes. They come in ranked 13th in the country, 19 and 7 on the season. And for Tom Davis, the starting lineup in the front court will have Roy Marble out of Flint, Michigan. The junior, along with Bill Jones. And the center will be Ed Horton. And in the backcourt, B.J. Armstrong, along with Michael Reeves, who gets his first start today. That because of the disciplinary tactic employed on Jeff Moe, who missed a meeting and will not start, but will see action in the game. You know, Vern, right now, this Michigan team cannot take this Iowa team lightly, and they may be looking past them because they beat them so badly in Ann Arbor. Right now, they've got to understand that this is a big, big win for Iowa, and they're on their Iowa's own home court, so they've got to come out and really get into the emotion of this game. Tom Davis was asked prior to the game how his Hawkeye team matched up against the Wolverines. Sometimes I feel sorry for some of the teams in the Big Ten who are down in the second division right now because they're improved ball clubs, they're good ball clubs, and that you run into too many teams like Michigan, like Purdue, that are just playing so well um, that you just get a lot of losses. It's, it's a very strong year in this conference. Obviously, Tom Davis talking about the strength of the Big Ten rather than the matchups. Tom Davis, in a sense, back home, having left Stanford two years ago. And previous stints at Boston College, Tommy, where you knew him well. I sure did, and I used to go to his practices quite a bit. He's an exponent of using speed, play with the little guys. What he's looking for is hustlers, guys that'll go out there and scratch out a win, and he's got a lot of them here at Iowa. Key factor in the graphic you saw is that Bill Frieder's bunch has won nine out of the last ten between these two teams, including three of four here. The only Iowa Hawkeye victory in this series recently came a year ago in this gymnasium. Tip controlled by Mark Hughes of Michigan. Gary Grant has the ball. First thing Michigan has to do is watch the turnovers. Two very high scoring teams. There's the first basket goes to Terry Mills off the glass. And you probably give Michigan the advantage in their inside game. They've got bigger players. Turnover Iowa. Tom Davis up off the bench and unhappy early. Michigan will inbound. There's the turnover even up. I'll tell you, one of the toughest things to do against Iowa is just inbounds the ball. Just get it to a man from the sideline or underneath the basket. It's Sometimes it looks like it's almost impossible. And it sounds like such a simple thing. Oh, so easy, right? Wait and see. Now, B.J. Armstrong to Bill Jones. 
Michigan in a man-to-man, -man, opens with Graham on B.J. Armstrong. He's the leading scorer, but it's an evenly distributed Iowa Hawkeye scoring attack. They have five starters, all five, with the exception of Reeves today, are in double figures. Out of bounds, it'll be Iowa's ball. One of the things that they do so well, Iowa, is have patience when they're forced into a half-court offense. They'll move it around. That three-pointer no good. Long rebound, Ramil Robinson. Quickly down, off the glass, doesn't get the roll. Horton with a rebound for Iowa. Here comes the Hawkeye fast break. Horton gets it back with time. Iowa can take it to the hoop as well as anybody in the conference. And there's the press after the made basket. They'll press you all day long. Michigan does control. Good decision not to attack that time. Iowa had three guys back. Tied at two. Minute seven gone by. Grant for three. Off the glass, rebound, Roy Marble. Looks like Iowa's going to really block out Michigan's big guys. Bill Jones, top of the key, now playing power forward after the injury to Al Lorenzen. Armstrong penetrates, knocked away. Marble. One of the things Michigan will have to be alert to is B.J. Armstrong's ability to get inside their defense and make the back guys move a little bit. That creates openings for guys like Marble on the boards. Watch the blocking out by Iyer underneath against the big guys of Michigan, and then one of the small guys stepping forward and picking off the rebound. Roy Marble shooting 73% from the line for the season. Exceptional inside player. A lot of people wonder if he can shoot from the outside, but he does great damage inside with his body on rebound action and puts it back very strong for a guy that's 6'6". Six, six. Marble gets one of two, and the rebound comes down in the hands of uh, Ramil Robinson. Iowa has had nearly a nine rebound per game edge this season. How about Hughes on the step ladder? But he traveled when he came down. Now, Rice has got the green light if he's open to let any shot fly and he's got all kinds of inside outside shots now michael reeves operates left side gets the ball for the iowa hawkeyes quickly around the perimeter to horton who comes back out marble acrobatic move gets the feed traveling on the baseline they'll work the ball iowa from side to side and get your defense leaning one way or the other and then penetrate with the ball now Terry Mills will inbound for the Michigan Wolverines. 18.06 to go first half. These are two high scoring teams. Iowa averaging 93 points per game and Michigan 88.7. O'Frieda wants to get the ball on a second pass against the press to his big ball handle. That was close to offensive interference. Awfully close and Tom Davis is off the bench. They attacked the basket beautifully that time. 4-3 Michigan lead. That basket for three won't go. Terry Mills gets it. Looks for Gary Grant. Finally gets it to him. A oh, great pass. Gary Grant saw Hughes floating under the basket. Well, that's where Iowa has its problem. At the back end of the pressure defense, they make bad judgments, gambles, and they don't really have a shot blocker. So Michigan prepared to take a right to him underneath the basket. Tom Davis going to his bench on the next dead ball timeout. Jeff Moe, Kent Hill getting ready to come in. 6-3 Michigan lead. Marble gets the roll. Uh, they'll roll off picks on the weak side, coming strong to the ball, and Marble does it beautifully. 6-5, Michigan by one. Man-to-man -man defense by Iowa now. Trap on the baseline, the nice feed along the baseline to Gary Grant. Boy, that was some look by Mills. 8-5, Michigan up by three. His foot out of balance. Substitutions now. Jeff Moe, number 20, the three-point artist. And Kent Hill, number 40, come in for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, Tom Davis uses a lot of players, not so many by number, but he rotates them into the game quickly to try and keep this defensive pressure up. It's also a good morale builder. Everybody feels like they're part of the game. Back to Mills, second pass. It goes to Gary Grant. That's exactly what Frieder wants. He wants Grant to get it on the second pass after the inbound. 
Reason for that is the entry pass. Mills got away with the travel. Kent Hill comes down with a rebound for the Hawkeyes. Armstrong, nifty move. Shoots a couple. Uh, Michigan has some difficulty every once in a while getting back on defense because their offense sometimes leaves their defense in poor position should the other team gain possession. That's what's called poor floor balance so that they're not ready to retreat quickly. And I think Armstrong is going to try and take advantage of that as much as possible. Armstrong hitting 89%, 88.8, second in the country in free throws. He's a pretty good all-around player himself. Can hit the outside shot and also penetrate and an exceptional passer when he gets the back line of anybody's defense to move. Here's a little exercise in beating the press. Second pass goes to Grant, up the sideline to Robinson, who now sees the trap developing, back to their good ball handler, Grant, and he'll survey the situation, and he, that's where the good decisions will be. Who's open, who gets it? 8-6 now, Michigan by two. Roy Marble had been out for just a second, is back in the lineup now, so Iowa goes with Hill, Moe, Marble, Armstrong, and Ed Horton. And Michigan had five guys back to try and get that ball in play. Now Gary Grant shoves it off. Gary Mills, two points. Well, he's just going to pick that defense apart. I think he's the key in this ball game. His good decisions. Gary Grant already with two assists. Yeah, yeah. And Iowa continues to patiently work the ball. Now back to Moe for three. Off target. Can't heal. Too strong. And Moe comes out with it. Horton. Foul, Robinson. A lot of great inside offensive rebounding that time by the big guy, Horton, the center. By a guard, Moe. That's what you need against Michigan. Everybody hit the ball. Uh, the boards and then get back on defense once you score. Here's all alone. Horton putting it back up. Gets knocked around, but look at Mo. What's he doing in there? He's a guard. <laughs> and finally, the foul from Ramil Robinson sends Ed Horton to the line where he's hitting 61% for the year. You know, it's not always important how big you are in rebounding. It's how quickly you get up and then hit the floor and get up again. And I think Iowa's got those type of rebounds. Ordinarily a good free throw shooting team, and they're now three of six early on, 50%. 15-28 to go first half. It's Michigan up by three. You cannot attack Iowa's press by formula. You have to have a guy that really can read the defense. They disguise the opening so well. And you're going to see right now Gary Grant just anticipating something happening, reading the double team potentially, then gets by, gets into the teeth of the defense, and then makes a great decision on the floor to create a layup opportunity. You must attack the basket. The weakness of Iowa's press are the two big guys back close to the hoop. 15.28 to go first half, and Iowa's going to the bench again as uh, Bill Jones and Michael Reeves are back in the lineup. Check this Michigan lineup. It remains as is. Ramil Robinson has the ball right now. Mills, Grant, Hughes, and Rice. Near steal by Moe, and Ramil Robinson gets it back. Boy, they have great trap men. Their hands are active all the time. Gary Grant, the only senior in the starting lineup. There's Glenn Rice. His first two, and with that, he ties Steve Brody for 11th on the all-time Michigan scoring list. Rice can shoot it on the dribble. He can shoot it standing still. Rice has really come on in Big Ten play. There's the attempted alley-oop. Robinson gets it, has the fast break two on one. Grant will take it all the way and gets a 720-degree spin, and he'll shoot for three points. Well, Hill uh, looks like the ultimate wide body, really challenged. Gary Grant, but Grant went up very strong that time to put that in, take the blow and still score. Look at him just take it strong, and Hill is going to really bang him, try and make sure that he doesn't score to two, makes, have to do it from with two free throws. Instead, Grant, with good strength himself, makes it happen. 
Gary getting his 121st start in a Michigan uniform today. Gets the free throw, and it's a 15-7 Michigan lead. Iowa had great shooting problems against this Michigan defense the last go-round. Matter of fact, at the timeout, they were only two of eight, now two of nine, and finally get a basket from Kent Hill. Got the good opening, the first shot. Grant controls, but uh, Iowa Tom is having uh, shooting problems here early on. Robinson, nice adjustment in midair. But again, attacking the hoop once they beat the tough part of the press, the gamble part, the trappers, go right to the basket, and Michigan's doing it. 17-9, Michigan. Jones has to adjust the shot and does nicely. Uh, when you play a man-to-man, -man, that leaves some gaps, particularly everybody's going to be out on Armstrong. Most teams don't sag back against the outside shooting of Iowa. Now Robinson dishes off to Grant. Kent Hill was there. Grant gets the follow. Battle and Hill has it. Now B.J. Armstrong. Nice bounce pass to Marble. back fast against Iowa because they go to the hoop. Foul on Iowa. Foul is on Roy Marble. Tom Davis, the exponent of the, of the bounce pass. And here you come, a little bounce pass to the wingman cutting into the hoop. Nice adjustment off the glass as the rotation of the Michigan defense took away the sure layup. Field goal percentage thus far, Iowa 5 of 12, Michigan 8 of 15. In the first meeting, they shot 59%, Michigan, that is. There's the inbound to Terry Mills. They look for Gary Grant, go to Robinson. Here comes the double team. Oh, he got away with an elbow. That was a great read by Robinson to find the open man. Jones with a rebound. Excellent rebounding by Iowa that time. Had four guys on the glass. Armstrong off to the left. Michigan comes across the midcourt line. There's Grant again. He's got a three-on-three. Three. How about that? Well, he looked off the one defender and made sure he got it to the guy that could make the layup. Beautiful read. Michael Reeves. Back to Bill Jones. Grant tried to save it. Mills did, too. Here comes Michigan right at you. Fast break. Only two defenders back there as he gets right through the pack, Grant. Lays it down to the wide open wingman and right the bottom man of the defense going out to play the wingman on the left. That's really knowing what to do as a middleman. That's Jim Bain, the official separating Hughes and Marble. Loy Vaughn has come in for Michigan now along with Mike Griffith. So Bill Frieder has gone to his bench seven minutes into the first half. Armstrong, Horton back in, Bill Jones, Mo Marble. The quintet on the floor for Iowa. Armstrong, penetration, off-balance shot. Rice comes down, traveling. Beautiful penetration that time, and Horton went right to the glass. Unluckily, he could not come up with the offensive rebound, but when Armstrong penetrates, they are very active getting to the glass. Iowa with a three-rebound edge thus far. Marble! Boy, it looks like Tim Daggett of our Olympic gymnastic team in the air. <laughs> Give him a bar, he'd jump over it. Bart Connor as well. Grant fishes off. Offensive foul. Watch Marble on the offensive glass right now. Just get the ball and the shot up and in. 15, Michigan leads. One second left. Shy of 12 minutes left. you got to get to Gary Grant early to stop the Michigan fast break and then double team him if possible when he gets into the paint. Iowa does it beautifully. They cut him off at the pass and all of a sudden he creates a charging situation. Great defense by, by Iowa that time to get up underneath Grant and force that charge violation on him.
That was the first foul on Gary Grant. Only four team fouls on Michigan. Iowa thus far with only one foul in the game. 19-15, 11-59 to go first half. We're in Lundquist with Tommy Heinsohn here from Carver Hawkeye Arena. As Michigan leads by four. They have won nine of the last ten meetings between the two teams. Horton fouled by Mike Griffin, number 20. For a big guy, Horton's got pretty good ability to put the ball on the floor, I think, except when he's got his back to the basket. Then he has all kinds of problems, and he doesn't recognize people coming down to help out. That will send Roy Marble back to the line. Or is it? No, it's going to be Horton. I beg your pardon. Ed Horton, a junior from Springfield. Very good inside player. Really spreads out, takes room underneath there. And he's got a pretty decent outside shot from uh, about 15 feet in. This Iowa team lost Al Lorenzen, the power forward, to uh, back surgery about a month ago. And they started Horton and Hill in the first meeting between these two teams. And then Tom Davis went to the change and started uh, Jeff Moe. Moe has started most of this month. Mills back in the lineup. Feeds it off to Loy Vaught. Mills with the follow. Boy, is he kind of a, an active player, that Terry Mills. Good passer and good rebounder. Again, Hill looks for Horton. They're just daring Hill to shoot from that outside position. Double team on the baseline. And Horton is stripped of it. Fine bounce pass, Gary Grant. Good double team down in that low post. Really created problems for Iowa. Grant, the leading scorer in the game now with Roy Marble. They both have seven. Armstrong off the pick, but then Mills comes out to defend it. Mo with the rebound. <laughs> what a spark plug he is. Grant tries the behind the back. Mo almost gets it. That was not intended for Mills, but he puts it up, and Horton gets the rebound. Here comes Iowa. Mo left side, Armstrong all the way. And that's just the type of play to get this crowd ignited and to pump a little emotion back into Iowa. Largest lead was eight at 17 to nine. It's now 23-21, Michigan. One thing about Tom Davis's teams, they'll go at you for the full 40 minutes. Glenn Rice quiet so far. And a chance to tie for the Hawkeyes. We're tied. Horton put it on the floor. Almost had that shot blocked. Look at the, the real coolness of Grant. Mike Griffin. Loy Bart, Michigan ball. Michigan so ready to advance that ball underneath the basket against this pressure defense. Michael Reeves and Bill Jones back in for the Hawkeyes now, numbers 11 and 14. There's Michael Reeves getting his first start today. The last Iowa fast break off the rebound. Good outlet pass quickly. Well, not that quick. <laughs> but up they come. And then it goes down inside as somebody from Michigan forgot their defensive assignment in that man-to-man. -man. You could see Horton pleading for the ball along the baseline. Red Rice to inbound. Ramil Robinson quickly to Lloyd Vaughn. Not a bad shooter for a big man. Very selective, and that makes him a good shooter. Takes only the shots he thinks he can make. No force. Michigan back on top by two. Hell ball and a possession arrow of points toward Iowa. Iowa has good inside, or excuse me, outside scoring, but today they're really getting the inside points that sometimes they don't see. And they'll need to do that against Michigan and help pick up some fouls against the bigger people from Michigan. Jones, bounce pass, Horton slips. Blue ball? Yes, Michigan ball. Horton put it on the floor and slipped on a wet spot, but he was ready to power it through. 
Total deny defense that time. And good decision to call a timeout. Michigan has to call a timeout. Bill Frieder gets his troops gathered around. Look at a deny defense. Nobody on the man taking the ball out of bounds. Everybody fronting somebody coming to the ball. That makes it extremely difficult just to inbound the ball, put them under the pressure. They call timeout. 15,500 or more on hand at Carver Hawkeye Arena on the campus of the University of Iowa this afternoon. As CBS brings you Big Ten basketball, the Michigan Wolverines once led by as many as eight. Iowa came back to tie at 23 all, and it's now a 25-23 Michigan lead. Vern Lundquist along with Tommy Heinsohn. And we saw the first difficulty of inbounding the ball. Michigan forced to call a timeout. And uh, that kind of gets a little scary when you have to use your timeout this early in the ball just to save a possession. Now they're all over the ball handler. Yeah, it's just another variation yeah. of the press, Tom. You, that's the IQ test. They disguise where the openings are. Boy, boy. No basket, travel. That is the fifth Michigan turnover of the game. They did what they were supposed to do, but a little violation in doing it. Uh, Michigan knows they're going to attack the basket. In the pit last night, New Mexico beat UTEP by 11 in Albuquerque. I saw the first four minutes of that game before it was nighty night time. 25 23, 8 40 to go in the first half. Go, go. Uh, Michigan is just packing their defense down man to man against this rotating offense of Iowa. B.J. Armstrong from the outside, one of the few outside shots Iowa's hit today. Well, you better get out there. Michigan's insulting the outside shooters of Iowa. And that gives Iowa only a second lead. Here's Kent Hill. Reeves. made a great gamble to pick off that pass by Robinson. And here's where young players can get rattled, but not Grant. Beats the double team. Dishes left side. Loy Bart comes back to set it up. He was afraid to walk a second time. And Gary Grant will go to the line. Let me quickly correct myself. That was Michael Reeves with the three-pointer and not B.J. Armstrong. Here's the double team that caused the turnover. And Ramiro Robinson sees a man, he thinks, down close to the basket, but Horton was right there waiting on the pass. And then look at uh, four on two, and an alley-oop, as that two-man defense didn't know who to pick up. Marble now with nine points, Terry Mills. That last foul was only the third team foul against Iowa. on Michael Reeves, Bill Jones, Roy Marble. Michigan gets caught an awful lot with poor floor balance. They are not prepared if they lose possession of the shot to get back on defense. And this is a perfect example. Nobody back there. And Iowa able to get a man out in front. A better pass would have created an absolutely easy layup. on Mike Griffin before the basket. Bow was on the drive, so the basket didn't count. Here's Marble. Bill Jones pumps once, puts it up. And Bills with a strong rebound for Michigan. Boy, he's showing me something. Rebounding, ball handling. That's kind of an inconsistent first year at Michigan. He was a Prop 48 student a year ago. There's the tip, Mark Hughes. That's another wide body that Michigan has. 28-27, 7 3 to go, first half. Yeah, Hughes has got enough, uh, enough body there to put three numbers on his jersey. How about the pass from Marble to Jones? Oh, inside stuff. They're eating up the interior part of Michigan's defense. There's the press. There's some feeling here that Roy Marble has not lived up to all the hype this season, that he's had an off year. If that is the case, he's certainly putting it to bed today. Here's Grant. Griffin with a foul. What 
destroy Marble with the pass once he gets it. Inside it goes, bounce pass, fakes up, gets two defenders, waits for the man to cut to the hoop. I mean, that's keeping you cool and making the right move. Quickly, Mike Griffin picks up three fouls, and Bill Frieder calls him back to the bench. Ramil Robinson back in now. So Griffin with three fouls. You know what Iowa does with this press defense? They show it to you, the same defense for a while. They get you to think that you've got it mastered, and all of a sudden, they disguise a different opening. They cover up what you thought was an opening, and they get you really second-guessing yourself and demoralizing yourself. Watch this, Tom. Look at the Hawkeye free throws. They have made 511 coming in today as opposed to 402 attempts by their opponents. What causes that? Well, because they get the ball inside very easily on their half-court offense, and, and when they play that aggressive pressure defense, they end up with a lot of fast-break opportunities, and sometimes, I would say a lot of times, they get fouled on the front end of the fast break uh, out of frustration uh, for just that defensive player throwing the ball away up the other end. Bill Jones gets one out of two. And it's a 31-27 Iowa lead. Well, now they took that press off and they just backed down. Mm -hmm. They're playing pretty good man-to-man. -man. They haven't gone to their normal 1-2-2 two, two zone. Bills had a little too much oof in the pump. <laughs> and he traveled. I'll take a zoomf anytime. <laughs> that oof caused him to move his feet. 31-27, 6-12. <laughs> Robinson strip, Jones follow. And the largest Iowa lead, now at six. Rice gets an elbow from Bo, but controls the ball. All right, again, they overplayed the man, <clears throat> and they all, Ira almost picked it off. Bill Jones fronting on Mark Hughes, now gets behind him. A little give and take, and that's the three short. Dip doesn't go for Rice. Horton with the rebound. Oh, crying for the basketball. Armstrong passes and drives. I see some great inside play coming up right now. The inside play. On the floor, a bounce pass. Now he tries to make a strong move to the hoop. No, not there. And Jones just picks up the rebound. But they do that so well, that entry pass, that's standard for Tom Davis's offense, a bounce pass along the baseline to a man coming to the low post. And Horton knows how to get the pass and make the shot. Bill Frieder wants to talk it over. 5.29 to go in the first half of play. The Hawkeyes are up by six. 5.29 before halftime, Iowa up by six. Vern Lundquist along with Tommy Heinsohn here in Iowa City. We have been joined today by Tim Brandt, who's coming up at halftime. And today is Tim Brandt's birthday. He turned 67 today. Oh, no, no, he didn't. Well, he just got he close. just reached the age where he can get his license and drive. That's right. Tim? Yeah, I hear you guys. I feel like I'm 67 today. 67 and 39 year old skin. Hey, listen, coming up at halftime on our college basketball report, I'll bring you guys up to date on some of the scores of the top teams around the country. There have been some stopgap measures taken by a couple of conferences to curb the misconduct in college basketball. And also I'll introduce you to the number one women's basketball team in the nation. That's all coming up at the half. Vern? All right. We, we enjoyed. <laughs> our half of the cake, Tim. Thanks. <laughs> 529 to go before halftime. Iowa 16 to 4 in the last 540. Well, <clears throat> they score in bunches. When they use this full court pressure defense, they're liable to get you disrupted, disorganized. Now, you really have to keep emotionally under control. That's where Grant is so important, his experience. If they can continue to get the ball in his hands, they can come back against the press and still exploit the weaknesses of Iowa underneath the basket when they attack the hoop. Armstrong shooting his fourth free throw. He's made two, now make it three out of four. Michael Reeves coming back into the lineup, and Armstrong will get a rest. Interesting, last year at the start of the season, the point guard spot was wide open between Michael Reeves and B.J. Armstrong, and Reeves had a knee injury. Armstrong came in and became one of the premier point guards in the country. 
And Reeves has been relegated to a backup role in this his senior season. Iowa will let you toss the back at the ball back behind the defense. Here's Jeff Moe for two on the steal. Poor decision by Taylor. Kirk Taylor, the freshman from Dayton, Ohio, threw it away. You see what happens when you're a freshman? Long pass to Rice, controlled by Ed Horton. Iowa leads by 10. Here's Moe. Rice gets it. is on Roy Marble. Last basket by Iowa. Now the freshman coming up, a double team. He gets a little nervous, thinks he sees an opening in the middle. It's not there and knocked away. And look how quickly Iowa can take it up and score. There you see the season average that the Hawkeyes create. And Michigan, nine so far in his game. 13 points off turnover thus far. 10 point Iowa lead. 440 to go first half. Kirk Taylor, number 23. Back it goes to Hughes, who doesn't want the shot. Grant inside the three-point line gets the roll. And Gary Grant has nine in the game. Armstrong goes back to the free throw line. Kirk Taylor gets the foul. Well, two of the stars on the court today, Glenn Rice and Roy Marble, high school rivals in Flint, Michigan. At Northwestern High School, Glenn Rice, Mr. Basketball in Michigan in 85, and the runner-up, Roy Marble, at Beecher High School. <laughs> and here they are three years later. There's Roy Marble, who has nine points so far in the game, and Glenn Rice relatively quiet thus far with only four. They've been on Glenn Rice, and he has not been able to get his shots off. Coming off picks. Uh, we have not been able to put the ball in a good shooter's hand. Roy Marble gets a rest on Tom Davis's bench now. See, and that's what happens when you use the press. You, you have to come out of your normal offense. So they can't spend an awful lot of time, Michigan, getting the ball to Rice. Michael Morgan has taken Roy Marble's place. Morgan, number 24. And back to a 10-point edge. A 22-6 run now by Iowa since the 11-11 mark. That's in the last seven minutes. Kirk Taylor, they back way off him. Mills with that pump. Armstrong, Reeves waits for it. Here's Michael Reeves. Bill Jones! A little frosting on Tim Brandt's cake. Rebound, Michigan. What a shot. I tell you, Mills and Brandt are keeping Michigan in this ball game right now. Lead is 10, 335 to go, first half. Foul away from the ball on Glenn Rice. Watch the fast break and particularly the touch pass for Michael Reeves at the end of this. You see nobody back protecting at all for Michigan. There's four guys well behind the advance of the ball. Normally most teams station at least one guy at the top of the offense to protect against a quick loss of possession and stop fast break opportunities. Michigan very guilty of people going to the boards when they shouldn't sometimes. Morgan will shoot another. Senior out of Houghton, Louisiana. One out of two, and Grant comes down with a rebound. Largest lead of the game was 12 by Iowa, now at 11, 42-31, 3.15 to go, near steal. Underneath the rice, and a chance for a three-point play. Near the conclusion of today's game, 
Tommy Heinsohn and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game for each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. That's coming up a little, little, little bit later on this afternoon. Glenn Rice with a chance for a three-point play. After the fast break, doesn't work. And they get the uh, the ball up against the press. They ought to be looking for Rice to get him a little bit more involved in the offense. He's an excellent outside shooter and a guy that can take it to the hoop. Horton too strong. Hill rebound, puts it in. Steal by Moe. There's the pressure again. You think you're going to inbound the ball, huh? And quickly back to a 12-point lead. Gary Grant. Armstrong, Mo, listen to the crowd. Should have made this, but there is excellent offensive rebounding by Ken Hill, the wide body, and he puts it up strong against the glass. Now, what Michigan does is not block out. Here's the inbounds pass after the score now, and after that type of, of basket that you score with, you get a little anxious to try and get it inbounds, and watch right now just one man disguise an opening and then step right in as the ball was late getting to the man in the middle. Ten Michigan turnovers thus far, seven for Iowa. And a 14-point lead at 48-34, 2.28 to go in the half. And Iowa with 15 points off turnovers. Boy, and they start to pile up. They count on turnover baskets for a great deal of their offense. I, I think probably more so than anybody else. You know, at the top of the game, we said they think that defense creates wins. And this is exactly what happens. They score a great proportion of their points off steals that produce easy layups. That's why they're scoring so many points and shooting so well. Well, they've come from eight down early in the game to 14 up. So they've outscored Michigan by 22 in the last uh, 10, 12 minutes, and we've got 2.28 to go in the half. You know, Tom Davis, I think, recruits to a system. He's looking for hustlers. He's a speed coach. And anybody that's got fast feet can play for Tom Davis as he, if he's willing to be a scrapper. This man, Bill Frieda, really recruits great ball players and tries to fit the system around those ball players. Interesting. Don't forget, coming up next, the third round of the Los Angeles Open presented by Nissan. Out at the Riviera Country Club in Los Angeles. That's next here on CBS. We've got 2.28 to go before halftime. And Ramil Robinson inbounds it. Pumps once, puts it up, and he'll go to the line. Well, they had a three-on-two opportunity that time off an out-of-bounds play on the sideline. That's almost unheard of. Uh, Ramil Robinson was afraid to pass the ball and took it strong to the hoop. Uh, that's what you can do. Uh, he, he is afraid to pass the ball. He said, I'm going to at least get fouled on this thing, if not score a basket. Robinson now with six points in the game, averaging 8.6 for the year. And the lead at 11. Foul, Gary Grant. Michigan trying to do to Iowa what Iowa's been doing to them, the full court press and pin somebody on the sideline, but instead Grant is called for the foul as he got a little bit too aggressive. That's his third, and Bill Frieder does not make a move to the bench. More than anything right now, he needs the experience of his senior captain. He absolutely does, because he's the guy that really has been under control and in breaking that press, it's been others who have not been able to get him the ball that's caused the problem. Armstrong with seven points. 
No basket, lane violation. Lane violation, so roll out the basket and give Michigan the ball in the inbounds. Horton was trying to cheat the rebound. Down inside, S. Horton trying to cheat the rebound by getting his shoulder in front of his man in case the shot was missed. Gary Grant to Ramil Robinson. 48-37, 2.15 to go, there's the trap. It's kind of a weak pass, but it uh, found its mark. Loy Vaught gets his second basket of the first half. Oh, he's got a nice looking shot. And a 14 point lead has been cut to nine. Here's Bill Jones with his own rebound. Again, that penetration doing the man to man defense of Michigan. Jones has 11 points to lead all scores. Robinson on the line. Another turnover. It just gets you to do what you don't want to do. And Frieder is upset. Pick from Jones, Armstrong feeds it back. Bounce pass, strip. Armstrong gets it for Iowa. Michigan ball. Here's the list of the Iowa coaches who've had 50 wins here. Pops Harrison was the leader, the quickest to get there with 50 wins in 59 games. And Tom Davis, if he wins today, will win his 50th in his second year as the head coach. That'll be Michigan's ball. Little zone defense that time. And just confusing him at all ends of the court. And as you can see, if Tom Davis wins today, it'll be his 50th with only 12 defeats. And another substitution. Bill Frieder's about to send Steve Stoiko into the lineup. Stoiko, a seldom used senior out of Bay Village, Ohio. Stoiko is a guy who ends every practice for Michigan by running from the top of whatever arena they're playing in, all the way down, full court, and then dunking the basketball. And if he misses the dunk, they make him do it again. He's got to go all the way back to the top. We were laughing with him yesterday. So when was the last time you missed? He said two weeks ago at Chrysler Arena. <laughs> it's a long try. I'd hate the coach that made me do that. <laughs> I think it was his idea. He he, it was his idea. Probably right. He's kind of a fun-loving kid. But he better have the fun punched out of him right now. He's got to produce and as many of those stuffs as possible. Now, Terry Mills at the line. The free throw. Differential in this game is unbelievable in the first half. Iowa has been at the line 16 times, Michigan four. Well, what Iowa will do is that if you get a three on two or a two on one situation, they will fake at you and more or less let you have, you have the shot. They don't deliberately foul like a lot of teams when you attack the basket. And when they get into their regular half court zone, a one, two, two, they don't get out there and really foul uh, against the perimeter people, and they got pretty good hands down inside. Back to a nine-point edge now, 115 remaining in the first half. Michigan was up by eight early at 17 to nine, and the largest Iowa lead has been 14. Here's Cam Michael Reeves into the teeth of the defense, feeds it off to Horton, and he'll shoot. As Ramil Robinson tried to take the charge and his call for the foul. Again, Michigan trying to put the same tactics on Iowa. Sometimes you catch a team that presses so well can't handle it themselves. But B.J. Armstrong knows where the opening is. Now Reeves, a good ball handler, takes it into the paint, and that allows the wingman to get open and at least attack the hoop and end up with a foul. Ed Horton goes to the line. He is three of four there today. People consider Ed Horton to be the weak link in their defense. Michigan chasing Purdue 11 and 2, and they get Purdue a week from today. But the loss today would put them two back with a game to play between now and then. Another lane violation. That's the second one. That's unusual. 
Well, a lot of players who line up for rebounds look to see when their knee go, knees go up and they go in there before the release of the ball, trying to get an inside position for a rebound. So you, you really have to know your shooters. That was Michael Reeves. Here's Grant at the track. Offensive foul, number four on Gary Grant. Uh, oh, boy, does that hurt Michigan. I think that was a terrible call. Uh, men surrounded him, and he moved, and I think the guy just faked the official out that time. Who was it, Jones, that took, took the charge? That puts Michigan in deep trouble right now. R Robinson will have to handle this press, and maybe Rice. Let's take a look at it. They have him trapped in the corner. He's trying to just split the seam, and the man has to give him a little room. He went down. It was Bill Jones who took the charge, and Grant goes to the bench with 103 to go in the first half. His fourth foul, he has nine points. Armstrong for Iowa. Off the pick supplied by Horton. Bounce pass, there's Morgan. What a play by Horton. He saw the double triple team and knew the weak side was wide open, but perfect pass. There's a foul on Michael Morgan. Just got the basket. Let's take a look at the last play. It goes down inside. You'll see the man cutting down into the low post. That's Horton. Now there's two men around him, and alertly Jones just goes to the hoop on the weak side, but Horton picked him up, spotted him. Iowa, after a two of eight start early on, is now hitting 56% in the first half. And Robinson can't get the free throw to drop. Horton with a rebound. Final 45 seconds, first half. Shot clock shows 35. So there's a two-second difference. Jones calls for the ball underneath. Armstrong settles for Horton. Shot clock at 20. Ball for three. Jones over the back. trying to send his team into the locker room with a, a big cheer from the crowd by hitting a three-pointer. Uh, that kind of shot was ill-advised. They could have worked the clock down a lot lower than they did. Glenn Rice goes to the line. One of one today, but only seven points in the first half. Now Terry Mills gets a rest and Mark Hughes back in for Michigan. And Rice will shoot the front end of a one and one. This man will be under the gun now, maybe to do more ball handling against that press. They have not been able to put it into his hands quite enough to get his good offense going. But how effective will he be with Grant on the bench? They may move him in up in, into a different spot and beating the press so that he does handle the ball. Substitution, Kirk Taylor back in for Michigan, and Glenn Rice goes to the bench. Here's the press defense right now by Michigan. 52-43. And Horton. Took his time, beat Michigan's press by attacking the hoop. Robinson off the front edge. the end of the first half for the score Iowa 54 to 43 Tim Brandt returns with the college basketball report now if the Hawkeyes go on to win today and beat Michigan Iowa will become the first school in the nation to have both the men and the women with at least 20 wins as a matter of fact the women Hawkeyes are ranked number one in the nation despite their first loss of the year last year to or last night rather to Ohio State but this crowd here at Iowa feels that that might be a blessing in disguise might get the women Hawkeyes thinking about the tournament get them fired up nonetheless it was a nightmare last night for the coaches and the players in a season that has been a dream 
Earlier this month, all the eyes of the political world focused in on the state of Iowa as the presidential candidates found themselves surrounded by energetic crowds of mid-Americans during the Iowa caucus. And as exciting as the Iowa basketball team has been, Hawkeye hysteria has brought the masses to Carver Hawkeye Arena. But as recently as five years ago, one place you definitely would not find a crowd in Iowa was at the Hawkeye women's basketball games. They averaged only 345 fans a game in this cavernous arena. Students used to come here to study because they said it was so quiet during the women's games. So the administration went out to hire a coach from a small school, but with a big dream. And now, Hawkeye women's basketball is the hottest ticket in town. The main attraction is a positive thinker named Vivian Stringer, who took over the head coaching job after a successful run at Cheney State. She coached Cheney to the top of the polls in the title game in 1982. It was hard to leave, but she told the media she had a dream. I was saying to them that I was a Pisces and I was a dreamer, and that my dream was to one day fill the Carver Hawkeye Arena. And the look on their faces was one in which uh, I thought I had to put them off the floor. They probably should have stayed on the floor because February 3rd, 1985, that was the only space in the arena available. More than 22,000 fans registered a national record for women's basketball. And with top-notch recruits, Iowa skyrocketed to the top of the polls. It's ironic that Temple and Iowa are the nation's two top teams because John Cheney of Temple and Vivian Stringer used to work together at Cheney State. And both feel today's success is more than just a coincidence. We were just thrown together out of necessity. Small basketball court uh, with two basketball teams, hers Division I, mine uh, Division II, uh, and having to practice every day. So we had to sit down and said, have to come to some kind of agreement as to how we're going to work this out. He would give the ball to his five guys, and then all of a sudden we'd come up the floor and present him with a 3-2 defense or 2-2-1 or press or whatever have you, and then they would have to technically break it. And the experience is just something you can imagine that if we could play against the guys, how great and easy it must have been then when we were playing against women who were much smaller. It's been said success is not a destination, but a continuous journey. And for Vivian Stringer, this season has been a dream. Vivian, you talked about the dream. How does the dream end? Temple winning the national championship and Iowa winning the national championship. I would just have to have a big smile on my face. And then right now, I don't know, I think I'd have to quit because I can't think of anything that would be better in the world than that. I'll guarantee you that if Temple does not win it all, that Vivian Stringer wants Dr. Tom Davis and the Iowa Hawkeyes to win it. Halftime with the Iowa Hawkeyes thrilling a hometown crowd with an 11 point lead 54 43 and they have done this with the turnovers the Hawkeyes have forced 12 turnovers already in the first half the season average of 17.5 per game and the points off turnovers thus far for Iowa 17 and for Michigan 11. With four fouls. Right, he's the guy that's really under the gun. He's going to start him now in this second half because he's so, so important to beating that press. But I'm sure right now that uh, Bill Frieda does not want him to foul out of this ballgame. Gary Grant, what do you think about the decision to play him? Well, they're down big numbers, and he's got to get their offense going and get a little confidence that they can handle this pressure again. But I'd be trying to get in this man's hand, Rice, or inside to this man, Mills. So Mills misses his first shot. Long rebound. Robinson tries to chase it down and does to Garrett Glenn Rice. From the baseline, Rice hits it. Now they've got to get their main shooter at the ball, and that's Rice. Uh, inside man Rice, get him off kicks if possible, get him into the flow of the action in the low post, and let him get the feel of the ball and get a rhythm in his shooting. Rice now four of nine for the game. There's Armstrong down along the baseline. Now Bill Jones. Marble. Rebound Robinson. Oh, oh. oh. hello. What a rebound. God, he grabbed the rebound and then bounced it off the glass. <laughs> Underneath, Rice, they're going right to him. He is the man. He is, I don't believe there's any one guy on Iowa that can stop him. Iowa's been playing man-to-man half-court offense. 
Roy Marble doesn't get the basket to go, but let's look at Glenn Rice in action. When he gets down in a low post, he's against the small man right now who's trying to front them. The pass goes over the top, and that allows him to make the catch and go up quickly for the jump shot. So look for him, get him involved. Second foul on Terry Mills, and Marble goes to the line where he's one of two today. Nine points so far. One of the great things that Tom Davis does with his offense is set picks for people to come to the low post so that they don't have to fight for position, and Marble is great at using that situation. That basket was waved off, so we'll start it again. set offense they're scoring more from the inside which is what you have to do against uh, a great team like Michigan and it's all being done with penetration instead of relying on the outside shooting ability of Armstrong and Mo they've made hay inside 56 47 18 33 to go Romeo Robinson to Mark Hughes quick entry pass from Grant he's got to be careful now Playing with four, and there's Rice again. That's six quick points, quick points for Glenn Rice. You have to get the ball to him, and they're doing it successfully. That time, a, a little bit by accident. But uh, Hughes, when he gets the ball at the high post, has got to look to either Mills or Rice and get him the ball. Jones thinks about it. <laughs> what a deliberate well, thought about a three-pointer. They are back way off of the man. Horton. Once again, getting the man wide open in a low post, and he had to double team, but still could get the shot off. How about the fake from Ramil Robinson? Well, as where Horton is weak, he, he makes bad gambles, gets faked out, and this year's Iowa team does not have the shot blocking ability to protect the basket that they had last season. 58-51. Go back to one more point about Al Lorenzen being out of the lineup with the back surgery. That means that Iowa defensively is weak down deep inside. Sure more so than any other place. Walking, baby! Off of Roy Marble. Substitutions now as Kent Hill and Jeff Moe come in for the Iowa Hawkeyes. You watch this little picking action that gets set up. And a ball goes around right there for Horton. He's wide open. They don't switch. Part of the problem with the Michigan defense is that they don't switch on picks underneath the basket. That's allowing Iowa to get good position in that low post. Gary Grant, in the meantime, put up a jumper and got it. It's 58-53, 17.05 to go. And Michigan Grant playing with four fouls. Pick up his fourth with a minute to go in the first half. That's Grant out on Kent Hill. Mills is fronting on Ed Horton. Down in the low post. Armstrong guarded by Ramil Robinson. Ten seconds on the shot clock, which comes into play for the first time this afternoon. Armstrong. Horton. Mo with a rebound. Great rebound that time, and I think Mills made a good block on Horton, but Mo was right there. Three on two, back to Gary Grant from Glenn Rice. Well, that's why Grant is back in this ball game right now, and he's making sure that Rice touches it. Offensive foul, Jeff Mo. Here comes Grant right at you. Look at him looking to the wing to see who might be open. Rice there. And Rice eludes a potential charge call and just drops it nicely back to Grant, who knew he had a layup if he stepped to the ball. An 11 point halftime Iowa lead has been lowered to six. Five, 60 to 55. Bullet pass. Boy, boy. I'll tell you, he can pick apart the defense. Once they beat the press, Grant is a master. 60 to 57. Marble, spin move twice, foul on Mills. The Michigan Wolverines have hit seven of eight to open the second half. And all good shots. And Iowa has been a little bit tentative 
trying to get their offense going, but they rely on a cumulative effect. They'll keep banging you, banging you, banging you, get this press working, and all of a sudden, they start to score in bunches. And after any time of halftime adjustment, you've got to expect the other team to make some kind of changes, but Iowa's perfectly capable of catching on again. Terry Mills will get a rest. He's picked up his third foul. And Roy Marble goes to the line where he is three of four today. A lot of people expect him to be Michael Jordan when he first showed up here, but he's not exactly that type of player. Coming up tomorrow on NCAA Basketball on CBS, the Syracuse Orange Men go down to Kentucky to take on the Wildcats. That's tomorrow. Marble gets the vote. And time has been called. A television timeout, a five-point Iowa lead at 62-57. Gary Grant with four fouls to open the second half. It's paid big dividends as Grant and Glenn Rice have led this Michigan comeback. Well, that's a cutsy decision, really, uh, because, uh, you know, you can be second-guessed as a coach. What kind of nonsense is that to start your key man with four fouls in the, in the second half? But it was very important that Michigan have their leader out there to get back into this ball game and to deliver the ball to the inside people, and it's worked. Grant is the only senior in the starting lineup. There is Glenn Rice, the junior, and he's uh, come on with a strong early second half, six points on three of three from the field. Uh, I've said it a couple of times already, he needs the ball, but the other guy that's a good option for Michigan inside is Terry Mills. And while we're at it, let's not ignore the effort of Ramil Robinson in the second half, so. Boy bought Mark Hughes now the inside man. Here's Robinson, Grant, and Rice for Michigan. Iowa is not as aggressive in their full court pressure. They attack a little bit off the half court. But they pull that full court off a little bit. Back to Rice in the high post. He pulls it out. Looks down low for Loy Bought. Good ball movement by Michigan. Now Rice takes the shot short. But a foul on Michael Morgan will send Glenn Rice to the free throw line. We're on the campus of the University of Iowa in Iowa City, where 15,500 or so are on hand at Carver Hawkeye Arena. And they have enjoyed an Iowa game against Michigan in which Iowa jumped onto a 14-point lead in the, in the first half, led by 11 at the half, but now the lead is down to five. This guy has been primarily responsible for it. I'll tell you, he's one of the real fine all-around forwards in anybody's league. He can shoot outside, he can put it on the floor, and more particularly, he offers them another passer, a very good ball handler who can dribble and has good decisions and the passes, the variety of passes to help his team. And he's a totally unselfish player. I think he's going to be a great pro prospect well, next year. There was a flurry in the papers here, Tom. He was quoted in uh, yesterday's papers as saying he was thinking about a hardship in the NBA at the end of this year and said, no, he's coming back to Michigan. I don't think he ever thought seriously about it. B.J. Armstrong dishes it left. Four-point lead. There's the three-pointer for Reeves. Too strong. Robinson gets it for Michigan. Oh, that was a wide miss. <laughs> Looks like a one quiz shot. Here's a guy that has to really help out a little bit with that type of penetration to create opening for Rice once again. Get inside, make the Iowa defense collapse, and then look for Rice. The lead is two. Rice has 18 points. And Armstrong is going to reload the offense. From the corner, Armstrong for three. How about Robinson up to tip the ball out? And here comes Gary Grant for Michigan. A touch pass to Glenn Rice, we're tied. That is perfect fast break basketball. Two point guards, Grant and Ramil Robinson. They just help Rice score that hoop. Foul on Ramil Robinson. But the touch pass was a thing of beauty, and Michigan is 9 of 10 from the field in this half. They're taking nothing but good shots. They've kept their poise. That's what a, a real winning team has to do. And they've also taken the crowd out of this game right now. For Iowa, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Iowa go more full court pressure coming up shortly just to just discombobulate them a little bit. Now, you look at Grant looking, and he gives it back to the middleman. 
Ramil Robinson and Rice in perfect position before that lone defender at the bottom of the defense could adjust. There's another foul underneath on Michigan. Loy fought. In the meantime, Mike Griffin comes in and Ramil Robinson went to the bench. Robinson went out with his third foul. Elsewhere in college basketball, Oklahoma rolling over Colorado. Pittsburgh defeats Connecticut. And Kansas leads Missouri. Important game for Larry Brown's bunch, as well as Norm Stewart's in the Big Eight. 52-50 in that game. Well, that Danny Manning showed us something last week, didn't he? Oh. And Horton misfires on the free throw. Also, how about Seton Hall, P.J. Carlos over Villanova by a bunch. Louisville defeats Virginia Tech as Tim Brandt told you at the half that gives them the Metro Conference lead. There's the pressure and here's Gary Grant. Glenn Rice. Oh! The tip goes. Loy Vaught. Uh, get the ball to him whether it's a, sh a jump shot or a layup and have the big guys trail for rebounds like Vaught did that time cleaning up any misses. Michigan back on top. They did lead by as many as eight early in the game. And Hughes with a rebound. 64-63. Wolverines on top by one. Grant to Mike Griffin. Boy, boy. Griffin saves it for the Wolverines. Hughes got it. Uh, swinging the ball beautifully in the bottom of the... Defense not rotating quick enough. 11 of 14 from the field in the second half for the Michigan Wolverines. They trail by 11 at the half. They lead by three, and Iowa calls time. Michigan on a 13 to 3 run. They have assumed a lead of three with 13 17 to go, and Gary Grant has played the entire second half with four fouls, and Michigan Tommy Heinsohn, zero turnovers in this half. And that has produced uh, good shots for Rice because they've been able to deliver the ball where they wanted it. Gary Grant, the only senior in the Michigan starting lineup, and Bill Frieder opted to go with him despite the four fouls. It's paid big dividends. Here's Mo with the entry pass, knocked away. Marble picks it up. 13-10 remaining in the ballgame. Michigan going man-to-man -man right now. Puts Grant on Jeff Moe. Turnover, that's the third for Iowa in this half. Great defense by Rice that time. He got picked off, but still got back to make the steal. Grant, three-pointer for Gary Grant. Boy, he got a lot of points. Finally, the only college player I know that I trust to play a half with four fouls. And he's playing so much within himself, realizing that he has that problem. And it's a 69-63 edge. Bill Jones, again, they give him the shot. He passes on it. Marble, Horton with the long rebound. Spin move into traffic. Rebound, Roy Vaughn of Michigan. Brian Horton just forced that ball that time. Mo, I think it was, was on the side, just waiting for an outside shot to try to change the momentum with a three-pointer. The Michigan subs are all up and encouraging their team. Going to try and take Iyer out of their 1-2-2 two, two zone right now. Uh, you know, sometimes that's a mistake. You change your own aggressiveness and the momentum that you have by sitting on the ball. You can, you can rely on Iowa not doing that if they get the ball. Grant for three. Oh, oh. bites for the rebound. Bill Jones on the line, Michigan ball. In the first half, Michigan had 12 turnovers, many forced by that aggressive Iowa defense. In this half, with Gary Grant doing most of the ball handling, none. I just don't think that they have attacked Michigan with that press quite as aggressively in this second half as they did in the first half. That's, uh, and that might be a little uh, decoy by Tom Davis. intelligently Michigan now. The IQ test, the score is going to Michigan. We'll return with more after this message from your local station. Today's Chevrolet. And by Bud Light. Everything
everything else is just a light. Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, a little quieter now than it was at halftime as Michigan has gone on an 18 to three streak and they lead by 871, 63, 11, 23 to go. Well, I think Gary Grant certainly with his poise against a very frenetic first half press defense by Iowa has now taken control of this game and delivered the ball to the guy that can put it in the basket, Rice. And that's what the story has been here in the second half. Now, Iowa has got to come out and also start to get more aggressive so they get some turnovers to make their easy steals or get Mo involved in the game if he's in there right now, which he's not. He's been their inspirational leader at times to change momentum with three-pointers. They've given Bill Jones that shot all day. He doesn't want it. Reeves, there's the bounce pass to Hill. Good play. And the way to attack that thing is to get on the baseline and overplay it and turn him to the middle. Rice back to Hughes. Basket count, yes. I'll tell you, that was an outstanding play by Rice to create that opening for Hughes. Just waiting for the trailer to get up there. Now you watch Iowa's last basket. The man come to the low post now. Right off the pick, or moves to the pick, right along the baseline, and Michigan went on tap to try and pick it off, and that let the man sweep in for the easy hoop. That was Kent Hill with a basket, and at the other end off the assist from Glenn Rice, Mark Hughes with a very agile move to get the basket and go to the line with a chance for three. He's still got a little baby fat on him. Wait till he toughens up. 73-65, nearing the 10-minute mark. Roy Marble gets two more. That's his game. Get him involved a little bit. Get him the ball. Rice. Back to Hughes. Griffin looks for Gary Grant and gets it to him. Grant with two offensive fouls among the four he picked up in the first half. Turnover. That's the first this half for Michigan. Jones, offensive foul. And it could have gone the other way, of course. They had a three-on-one opportunity, and all they had to do was make a pass, and they get a layup out of it. Watch the turnover coming up right now. Griffin just over the head of Rice, who can't hold on to it. And now it's a three-on-one, and the man should have dropped the ball off. That's why he ended up with the charge. Mike Griffin took the charge. He's playing with three fouls, and the Iowa bench erupted. Now the inbound play by Michigan. Gary Grant. Just patiently brings it across the timeline. Oh, you, he's just beautiful. Mr. Cool. 73-67 with 10 to go in the ball game. Iowa's going to really make that charge right now with this pressure defense. And this is the guy that's going to have to control the action. Gary Grant. Michigan was up by eight in the first half, trailed by as many as 14. Down by 11 at the half, and they've come back to lead by as many as eight in this half. Oh. And that rebound goes to Lloyd Vaught of Michigan. Double team. Gets rid of it. Three big guys there in, in for Michigan. They got to try and capitalize on one of them. Get them open inside. Mills instead comes way out. Mike Grant, Gary's brother, a graduate assistant, is holding up a sign on the bench that says, Whoa! Uh, you can see him to the right of Bill Frieder. That means low post, I'll bet. Exactly, I can figure that out. <laughs> what the heck? If you can hit like that, don't worry about it. Get out there for the jumper. 75, 67, 850. Marble will shoot a couple. There is no jump shot in his repertoire. He takes it strong to the hoop every time. Roy Marble. As White with the good save 
And now trying to find a man just makes a good step, almost walks. And then later on in possession, it gets down into uh, Terry Mills's hands. And he says, I'm going to take this jump shot. And for a guy his size, that's great shooting. Lloyd Vaught made the play by saving it. Just about walked, and now Marble at the line. 15 points this afternoon. You know, I made alluded to before, people thought that he was going to be a Michael Jordan type of player, a Skywalker that could do all those great things. Well, Michael Jordan really came into his own in the pros with all the things that showed, even though he's a great college player. Marble, within the framework of what they're doing here, is very good. Kent Hill with the follow. And the lead is Michigan by five, 8.40 to go in the game. Here's Gary Grant. That foul on Ed Horton. That was a total deny for on the inbound, and they very alertly got it to the one man that had an angle to receive the pass, and then got it into the hands of Grant. In the first half, Michigan 47%. In this half, 75%. And Iowa's fallen off to 33. Bill Frieder was telling uh, Tommy and me last night about the game against Indiana two weeks ago when Michigan scored on 18 consecutive possessions. <laughs> Foul on Hill. But did you see Ramil Robinson go up to get that pass? It was way above his head. That's what created the foul by Hill. That's the fourth on Kent Hill. He'll leave. Bill Jones comes back in. Following our ball game this afternoon, third round coverage of the Los Angeles Open presented by Nissan. That's next here on CBS. Bills. Jones with the takeaway. Oh, what a steal that time by Jones. Mills thought he had it really protected. No way. Again, Hughes backs off to give Jones the outside shot. 75, 78, 15 to go. A must possession here. Now Jones takes it. They need the momentum, a little emotion back in their ball game. That's what put, pumps a little life into that press defense. After passing on the three-pointer most of the afternoon, he takes it and then Grant counters to Michigan. Uh, does he read a game? We need to. I'm getting it. Michigan ball. Terrific play by Terry Mills, and Roy Marble is in the stands. Let Jones make a great steal on this replay as Mills has the ball. He thinks it's protected, and Jones just comes right in and pops it loose. Up the other end, they get him in the corner uh, to the left of your screen, all the way around the horn. They, they're daring him to shoot, and he says, it's mine. And at midcourt, Mike Reeves and Tom Davis off the bench. Foul called on Reeves. It'll be one and one. You know, when you hit an outside shot or any kind of a shot in a set offense, a pressing team, that makes them even put more vigor into their shoes to become more aggressive. Now, that shot by Jones that we just showed really is going to help them play a lot better defense. Romeo Robinson goes to the free throw line. One of two today. He's from Patrick Ewing's high school up my neck of the woods around Boston. Rings check and uh, great kid. 15,500 have jammed Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. And a terrific ball game thus far as the lead is teeter tottered back and forth. Michigan currently on top, 78-73. Rabiel Robinson with the second half of the one and one gets it. And the lead is back at six after Michigan trail by 11 at the half. Well, Armstrong is going to have to start delivering the ball to the right shooters of Iowa, much like Grant did for Michigan to get it to right. Now, who's the inside player? Marvel. Strong. Over Mills gets it. Got a pick and roll work, and Mill 
switched out, but didn't cover shooting hand. 79-75 at the seven-minute mark. Robinson, crowd thought he traveled. Lloyd Vaught getting ready to come back in for Michigan and Kent Hill for Iowa. Hill with four fouls. And just to re-emphasize, Gary Grant has played the entire second half with four fouls. Mark Hughes, marble rebound for Iowa. For three, Bill Jones rebound. Armstrong for three. Yes! Iowa with a chance to go back on top. Marble will shoot. Marble was going to score that time, no matter what. He took the outlet pass well in back in, in the backcourt and just headed to the hoop, regardless of circumstances. That's four fouls on Terry Mills, and Roy Marble goes to the line. Six of eight today. You know, a good man-to-man -man press by Iowa might be in order now, just so that they can't get the ball into Grant's hands. Yeah. There's the penetration, and Armstrong at the top of the bottom of your screen now, right out of three-point range as the entire Michigan team drops to protect, and Armstrong can hit that shot. We're tied at 79. Michael Morgan comes back in for Roy Marble for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Look at him getting down on that press. That's doing it. Vaught with the inbound pass. Now they get it to Glenn Rice. Michigan has Ramil Robinson, Hughes, Rice, Grant, and Roy Vaughn on the court. And surprisingly, Michigan is having their big players in the backcourt bring the ball up. Could that be to be protect Grant at all? I don't know. He's been handling it most of the time before, but Rice and Hughes brought it up. Roy Vaughn. Well, he doesn't shoot them often, but when they do, they're good shots. 81 to 79, 530. Here comes Mark Hughes for Michigan. Quiets the crowd again. Bad pass by Mo. Armstrong. Switching defense by Michigan puts Vaughn on Armstrong. Nice bounce pass left side. Ramil Robinson guilty of the foul. Here's the uh, pickoff as Mo really doesn't look to see if his man is open or covered and just allowed Hughes, the big body, to, walk, to swipe that pass and head for the hoop. Robinson now playing with four fouls, but not playing for long. Griffin comes in for him. Points off turnovers in this half. Michigan 11, Iowa 3. So the Wolverines have three players with four fouls now. Terry Mills and Romeo Robinson on the bench with four each. Grant continues to play with four. That's amazing. In a college game for a kid to have that much poise to know what to do and not force the issue. Beautiful basketball by Grant. Michael Morgan gets the front end of the one and one. Coming up next, the third round of the Los Angeles Open presented by Nissan here on CBS. Marble back in for Iowa. Morgan goes to the bench. Just enough of a little rest on the bench to get their feet in the game. The key guy right now is Horton. Don't make a bad gamble. Boy, that was close for the time limit. Horton back on the tail end of the defense. Now Griffin brings it across for Michigan. Back to Hughes. We go to the half-court offense. Glenn Rice. Loy Vaught way up in the air, but Kent Hill comes down with it for the Hawkeyes. And a chance to tie for Iowa. 4.45 to go in the game. Oh, too strong. 
Hill. Too short, but he'll shoot. Well, Horton has missed a couple of those shots in close to the hoop. He kind of expects contact all the time and just threw it up there. Now, this is a great pass by Marvel inside. He's wide open. All he had to do is touch it off the glass, and it was two. But look at this guy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A bang and a bang and uh -huh. <laughs> You don't look like John Madden. I'll tell you. Foul trouble you know, so when you're far. A, you're an inside player like I used to be. When you get underneath oh, yeah. that basket yeah. and guys start wrapping you around, that's probably the toughest thing to do is remain strong and still release the ball with a soft touch. Hill this is the first of two. You know all those fancy damn guards out there shooting long distance shots. They never get their nose dirty uh, for rebounds. 83 82 Michigan still on top by one 435 remaining in the ball game. Grant scoots down drills the ball and it's off the Iowa Hawkeyes. It'll be Michigan's the inbound. What a pass. Looked like a Kovacs was, fastball. That was a layup there if Vaught had had his hands up. Michigan has one timeout left. Iowa two. No fouls to give. The possession error points toward Iowa. Man to man by Iowa. <laughs> Drive the back door play, but Grant was well covered by Michael Reeves. Shot clock at 15. Glenn Rice. Hill with a rebound. Oh. And a chance for Iowa to take the lead. Armstrong. Marble. Got on the front end of the break. Armstrong with the jump shot. The cleanup rebound by Marble. Beautiful. Peter sends Mills back in. This coming up, and everybody with a white jersey just heading to the hoop, and Marble in perfect position to tip it in on the miss. Iowa by one. This is a television timeout. Sellout crowd at Carver Hawkeye Arena on the campus of the University of Iowa, where the Hawkeyes lost an 11 point lead, trailed by as many as eight in this half. And then Iowa has come back on the Roy Marble tip in to take the lead by one. That's the timeouts remaining, but the guy that has to bring him back, I think, is Rice. Grant will have to be a little bit cute about his penetration. Normally, I would say Grant would be the guy, but this, with Grant with four fouls, the man that's got to score is Rice. They get it inbounds to Glenn Rice, and he gives it up to Ramiro Robinson. Robinson and Mills and Gary Grant. Like four fouls. Get the ball to Rice where he can do something on this man Mills inside to go one on one. Mark Hughes, not normally the scoring threat. There's Mills. Shot clock at 19. Grant. Oh, dandy play. They work the Iowa defense. They're making them expend a lot of energy on that half court defense now. Gary Grant had nine points at the half. He's got 22 now in the entire second half with the four fouls. Rebound right to Michael Reeves. Michigan up by one, 3.04 to go. Well, Armstrong should only be taking the secondary shot from the outside if the defense backs in. They should be looking inside to this man in the low post marble if possible. Marble sets the back screen trying to free up Michael Reeves. B.J. Armstrong. Horton. Oh, he somehow got that in. Boy, it could have been a foul that time, too, as he took a blow. 86-85, Iowa with the lead. Near turnover. Robinson saves it for Michigan. The object is to get a good shot every time you come up. Not really to work the clock down, I don't think. Get a good shot. Something going to the hoop. Marble to Armstrong. And wisely, he brings it back out. Two defenders back there, and Armstrong didn't spot a third guy coming up, so he pulls it out. Armstrong back to Horton. Hawkeyes lead by one, 150 to go. Shot clock at 
at 12. Need a good shot. Five. Armstrong. Foul by Robinson. That's going to be it for Reveal Robinson in the game. That was a clear out. They tried a little pick and roll, and once he got by there, there was no Michigan defender down close to the basket. He had a pretty decent angle going to the hoop. It ends up with Ramil Robinson fouling him, who had to stay with it. A tough man that can penetrate. 11 points for Robinson. Encourages his teammates before he heads to the bench. That leaves two in the lineup with four fouls. Gary Grant and Terry Mills. And Mike Griffin comes back in. Coming up next, the third round of the Los Angeles Open, presented by Nissan from the Riviera Country Club in Los Angeles. That's next on CBS. We have 131 to go. I just love to look at the eyes of a shooter that knows that there are two foul shots on the line. I look at this kid's eyes. He is going to sight the basket. And you can tell he's got the poise. It's the guys that don't look at the rim, that kind of look at the rim at the last instant. It's, you, you can almost tell they don't want to shoot it, but not this guy. Iowa by three. 88, 85, 91 seconds to go. Iowa turnover. Marble and Griffin. And I'll tell you, they made a great steal, Iowa. But then took a shot from out of bounds, a, a bad shot. Here's the steal coming up as Moe knock, knocks it over to the corner. Now, they should have just held the ball for a work the clock down a little bit. They didn't. That was ruled a hell ball. The possession arrow Iowa's way. Timeout, Hawkeyes. 88-85 with 1.23 to go in the ball game. remaining both teams with one and in foul trouble Ramil Robinson has already fouled out for Michigan Brandon Mills continue to play with four Kent Hill has four for Iowa Iowa has to work the ball the clock down as much as possible and still come up with a good shot now they have elected to give the ball to Armstrong as the clock has been going down Mark Hughes that's his first foul now that was Iowa's version of the stall offense they had everybody up above the head of the key so anybody could go one-on-one -on -one and take it strong to the hoop which is what jones tried to do bill jones one of two from the line today and for the season only a 60 percent free throw shooter now let's look at his eyes okay i love to look at their eyes see if there's any difference in yeah. the jones eyes and the armstrong eyes Uh, he just don't want to look at that rim. Ah, right, there we are. Oh, ah. No, ah. They look up and they say, it's mine. Then you you can just feel it. Is that guaranteed to work? Ah, well, get him a little distracted or a little anxious. Now let's look, uh, see how he looks on the second one. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you're getting pretty good at it, see? Five-point Iowa lead, 1-10 to go. Rice, Jones won't give him the three-pointer. Now he's got it. Horton rebound. Foul. No, no foul. No foul. It was off Gary Grant. It'll be Iowa's ball. Stoiko getting ready to come in. Armstrong. What do you think the Purdue Boilermakers are thinking about watching this game? They have currently a one-game edge over Michigan. Iowa, Armstrong avoids the trap. 35 seconds remaining. They should have fouled way before that. Long man to foul. He's the number two free throw shooter in the country. That's four on Griffin. 
they don't quite have the speed in the backcourt. Well, a foul the wrong man right here, and he's just dribbling a clock down. They should have fouled way before this. Give themselves a couple of chances at possessions, and Grant hurt his knee on that play. We didn't have his eyes on that one. That's unexpected. Grant for three. Yes! Michigan uses its last timeout. They have pulled it within two with 18 seconds remaining in the game. Remaining in the ball game, and shortly after we went to the commercial, that official, Malcolm Hempel, who ruled a three-pointer, was overruled by Ron Witter. Watch it now, Tom Heinsohn. Uh, you watch him come to the middle. That's Gary Grant, and he pulls up off that little pick. And you can see right there that his both feet were behind the three-point line. He makes the basket, and you watch the left of your screen on the bottom. The official with one hand up, and it goes through. He gives him the three-pointer, but the official at the top of the screen Said it was only two. It was Hemp Hill who said three-point basket. The replay shows he was correct, but Ron Winter, the trailing official on the play, said no, it was only good for two. And as a result, it's a 90 to 87 game right now. Griffin tries to get the steal, doesn't Iowa to inbound. And Michigan just overplayed everybody coming to the ball as Bill Frieda wishes he was back in Ann Arbor right now with 16 seconds to go. with one timeout left. Clock shows 16 seconds. So Gary Grant's basket counted for only two, about three. Intentional foul on Mike Griffin. Little picking action to try and shake somebody loose going down the court. And Griffith, Griffin just grabbed. That's five on Griffin. That means Iowa will shoot two and get the ball. It's going to be B.J. Armstrong at the line. He just missed his last one, the front end of the one and one. Well, he can't wait right now. They're trying to freeze him a little bit. It's a two-shot intentional foul, so it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. The ball had not been inbounded. And it's going to be Michael Reeves who will shoot it. Armstrong doing a little poaching. <laughs> sitting at the line just in case they didn't get it. Here's Reeves. Two shots. Here's the play, the intentional. They're all boxed up. And Griffin in the middle of the pack had grabbed hold of one of the players. And at the other end, Reeves gets the second of the two, and it's an Iowa lead of four. Michigan currently trailing Purdue by one game. Iowa three back. And Iowa has a very tough schedule left. They've got to play three of their final four on the road. Michigan two at home, two on the road. Armstrong fouled by Mills. That's five on Terry Mills. That pressure defense that Iowa puts on you, you just have to play intelligent basketball and i'll tell you michigan had played it as intelligently as you can expect they didn't make that many turnovers in the second half totally under control but iowa is tough team to beat at home mills leaves the ball game with 12 points today and armstrong back at the line Everybody back for Iowa to protect against a quick hoop. Chevrolet most valuable players in the game today. Gary Grant for Michigan playing the entire second half with the four fouls. Winds up with, uh, at least for now, 24 points. And B.J. Armstrong, the man at the line, who has 16 points for Iowa. And a check of the amount of $1,000 to be donated to East School's General Scholarship Fund 
The further assist qualified students in their chosen field of endeavor. Here's Horton with the counter. shot as Rice lost possession of the ball and what are you going to say great win and Tom Davis who really has brought aggressive basketball to Iowa in all its phases a happy win for him Bill Frieda wishes he was in Ann Arbor but his team